And unless we break the cycle of distress, this will not happen. And there are several things going on, and I'll explain to you about them. But at the end, I will give my own personal suggestions, and I'll ask for your own personal suggestions, because we have given 200 years for what, what is the usual way of making a change. What are, what are human values? The innate dignity of human life. Dignity of human life. There is no dignity for these girls. The respect and consideration for the other. She is not respected. Even her parents are not respected. The interconnection between humankind and the environment and thus the need to care for and preserve the earth. An attitude of non-violence. There is is a fully violent, very rare cases the non-violent family that she goes to. She is supposed to be the new slave of the house. The individual and collective quest for peace and happiness. She wants peace. She wants happiness. She doesn't tell her parents because the parents are laborers. They don't know what to do. But she keeps quiet and at the end she might die. ICPD has 12 reproductive rights. All of them are related to the basic rights of women. The right to decide whether or when to have children. The right to decide whether or not to marry and build a family. The right to the benefits of scientific progress, like the best medicines. They get no medicines, no antibiotic checkup, no, no PNC. Nobody there to get delivered their babies. So most of them suffer from obstetric history after giving birth to a stillborn. And I have personally set up the fistula program in Bangladesh. Personally set up the cervical cancer program in Bangladesh. The right to be free from torture and being treatment. This is a reproductive right, apart from basic human right. Torture and ill treatment is her daily food. So these are the countries. Niger, 75% of the girls married before 18, Chad, Central African Republic, Bangladesh 66. India is 47%. 66% of our girls are married before 18 years old. And the government makes a few figures in India. Statistics, statistics and lies. One day, uh, Derek asked me, your father was a judge in the Supreme Court, what would you be? I think I would be the hanging judge. Because, <laughs> Derek, don't video this. <laughs> because the, the one, things I will propose is not what the government would ever propose. But that will work. So child marriage in Great Britain is still 16. The minimum age was 16 in 1929. 2000 young people were married before 18. Between these five years, 2010 and 15. Bangladesh went to this family planning summit. And there, our Prime Minister, I went all her into range of uh, sand events. All of them said, uh, if Britain has 16, why are we waiting for 18? Let's make it 16. If Great Britain can get the girls mad off at 16, why are we waiting? Well, we are better than them. Let's make it 16. Now, how stupid can you get? Look at their society. They don't have to get married at all. They, have, they can live, they can get pregnant, they can marry, they can have a child. Nobody will say anything to them. It's up to them. After 16, they are free. So they take their own decision. And uh, the, from the parliament, Mabel Ryan Orange had said that uh, the UK should practice what it preaches because UK uh, is spending over 40, almost 40 million pounds trying to stop child marriage in other countries. But if you look into their, this is a map, and look at it. No, in, in certain places, no concern, I, not, I don't know the names of these places, no concern to be interested. Estonia 16, Estonia is, this is great, this is 16, but uh, this is 16, 
and lower stage non negative and only this part man should be allowed for 20. That is actually London and England. But in other countries, the other places it's allowed in Great Britain. In Bangladesh, the legal age in marriage actually was 16 but it was in 2029 but became 18 during the 80s. Now, a great new marriage law in Bangladesh invokes a parental permission loophole, setting no minimum age for marriage and a stunning turn of events such as human rights groups up in arms. So that we have been trying. And the law sets no minimum age, set for the parental consent clause. It says that a marriage will be granted. Uh, so, if the, even if the girls are younger than 15, Provided there is a definite reason for it, and that's a consent clause. So this is called, and this, the Bangladesh uh, cabinet approved the draft of the Child Marriage Reduction Act 2016, and he, after this, all of us went up in arms. They kept the minimum age at 18, but we said make it 21. They said we can, we can barely keep it 18 because. The Prime Minister and the whole groups are, are pushing. The current Education Minister, a lady, she was a women's tech minister. She said, Why are you I am an activist, women's activist, and, and I belong to the White Women Alliance. And we see it, women's, it's, a, it's, it's not an NGO, it, it's, a, it's, it's a group network. And the network, is free. Anybody can come. From, from a farmer's wife or to a farmer, to a rickshaw wife, anybody can come and talk about the problems they're facing. And the cabinet, however, incorporated a provision paving the way for marriage of minor girls under 18 years in special circumstances. So our whole cabinet is ruled. Our Justice system is ruled. They have no power. So the situation of married adults, adolescent girls in Bangladesh, early marriage, early pregnancy. So once you get married, the mother in law, the father in law demands, within one year she must show that she's for right. And she must have a male child. Okay, the first child is the daughter of a male child or they are not happy, but okay, it's fine. Some sweets, that's all. Then she has to get pregnant the next year. The second child is also a third, a girl. And the third child is also a girl. What happens to the girl? To the child bride? Goodbye, he gets on the way. Goodbye what? Goodbye girl, bride. She goes back to her father's house. Most marriages are not registered to And he gets another wife. And the mother in law quickly gets another wife. She will be your sons. They don't know, they, even if, if you tell them it's the man's fault, they will never, never believe it. So, uh, the 50% of adolescent girls are malnourished. The maternal mortality rate is double the national rate. And no involvement in the decision making regarding marriage. If we have to, in our system, we are Muslims, we are supposed to get the more, which is the bright price. But because we are so close to West Bengal, we have taken over the Hindu concept of dowry. And what happens is the bride, bride's father has to pay either in cash or in kind for a good bridegroom. So the younger the girl is, she has to pay this. If the girl is educated, she's over 18, no, no, she's below two old, I will be you we have to pay double the price. And if you don't pay the price, if you pay the price and say, the demand will go on and on and on until she's killed or she commits suicide. Married females elders lack awareness of reproductive health issues, Discontinued education, they don't have admission in school anymore. This is what I've been telling the Ministry of Education. Any girl can get admitted. 
You don't need to marry and unmarried. That's not what your concern is. Then he said, no, no, we cannot have a pregnant girl in there. Why not? This, this is reality. And most bad female relations are unemployed. This is a picture I took of a, she's a 16 year old girl. And it was not a normal baby. But luckily we had a skilled birth attendant at the field, took her to this maternal child and she had a scissor boy, thank God. Look, she has this. Look at her skeleton. And how old is she? And this adolescent girl, she's not addicted, she looks it. She's she has become pregnant. She's happy she's pregnant. She hopes it's a, it's a boy. And if we study highlights this adolescent pregnancy, it's of adolescent pregnancy, it's all there that, you know, they, uh, in their increased health risk, according to the new study, and study was carried out by researchers from the Washington, D.C. Bay International Food Policy Institute, in free. It found that adolescent mothers recovered more slowly and often faced more health complications than mature mothers. Definitely, her pelvis is not developed. And she's anemic. And also they, they, they scale, scored lower on a scale of postpartum functional abilities. I'm looking after the baby, looking after herself, breastfeeding the child. She doesn't know, she herself is a child. Infants of adolescent mothers showed health risks. They, they had underweight babies. And 22.4% of the weight were as compared to 17.9% from adult mothers. Overall, the research demonstrated that adolescent pregnancy is riskier for both mother and infant, even when material services are available and widely used. Risk range from greater risk of anemia to low birth weight, affecting the lifelong well being of a young mother and child. Economic risk also being heavily on younger mothers who demonstrate higher risk rates of early school dropout, which leaves them less empowered in the long run and hence more vulnerable to sustain power. Remember when as soon as she, she gets a menarche, she gets a periods, she stops doing school. And that means her reading skills are very poor and becomes poorer and poorer and she doesn't have the window to the outside world. She cannot read a magazine. She can only look at pictures if she is allowed. So this is intimate partner violence and violence is really very really hard in younger girls. Girls who are married at younger age. It becomes lower but this is the highest. And domestic and for underage brides they explain more physical and sexual violence because of the lower power to resist. They are too young to resist. And an analysis of DH is that data, Bangladesh Demographic Health Survey data, on 25 to 49 years in three countries in the past two decades showed that women who married at a younger age were more likely to experience violence than those who married at an older age. And it has been seen that higher individual schooling attainment, a longer duration of marriage, and a high household wealth in childhood were protected against physical in, uh, intimate partner of violence. That means if her mother and father, if her family is rich, they pay off their room. Because if she if she's beaten up or he goes and gives gifts. This is the graph of domestic violence in this room. And murdered by, by husband. Tortured. This is here. This is, this is the difference. Talk about this is true. I'll give the sources of everyone. <coughs> and empowerment and autonomy because of lack of education and underage marriage contribute to lower empowerment of women at the individual level. Husbands and mothers in law tend to exert greater control <coughs> over younger women and they, may be, they cannot assert themselves. Being female and of a younger age limits their ability to exercise autonomy during the childbearing years. Young mothers' lack of control over their own fertility increases the risk of numerous negative mental health and child survival outcomes. 
So sometimes she should speak. If she has a good friend, she should speak to the clinic and get an injection, a contraceptive injection, either a demo provider or a prostitute. Only then husband will not go. Nobody will know. <coughs> Mental health and child marriage. Because adolescence is a period of critical development, 50% of mental disorders are present at the age of 14 years. Girls who are married out during adolescence also experience the physical and emotional effects of adolescence and the effect of sound mental. Because adolescence is a period where your hormones are going up and down. It's a turbulent period. When you play in the sea, when turbulence is there, it goes up, down and up, down and up. And that's how their mood goes, up and down. And there they are in a hostile environment. They want to go home, but the parents say, no, 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 you stay there, you stay there. So this is where they are between the, the devil and the big blue sea. So early marriage and childbearing with mortality, so when we stood and sleep for babies, father's stress will be. The baby has died and she has been stood up. So she has urine and feces coming out of her vagina at the same time. So her husband will first say, uh, you are smelling, can you sit down on the floor? So she sleeps on the floor. Then the next day the husband sends the mother in law said, look, you are sleeping in the whole room, go to the veranda. Because you know, so all our one room hurts and there is a veranda. So she sleeps there. And then they say, look, you can't stay like this. Then cow sheep is there, you stay there. Full of mosquitoes. And when I asked the first 30 patients who were treated after the train, I came the doctors in Hamlet Hospital in Ethiopia that what is the feeling? All your husbands are bad, they are all bad now. Because they know this is where I get 50,000 taka that I arranged from UNFPA. So they can, and they've all been treated for three months that we were under observation. In whatever, whatever skills, singing, singing, whatever skill they wanted. I have them trained, I have trainer, and I rented a hostel for them. And all the men were there. And I said, asked one of them. And she said that uh, your husband is very he won't go good too. I said no, I said, why? Because my father and my brother carried me on the backs. And that's why I'm living now. And another person I asked after the operation, the day after the operation. And they said, I said, how does it feel? She said, my bed is not wet. See, these are human angles. That is why I never took an international assignment. Our people are suffering, all, our men are the worst in the world. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, uh, child where, where, where I suffer from common, you don't know that. And a survey of 3,000 women, in Goa, India, for house, early marriage, at age of marriage, January, low levels of decision making autonomy, family support, and sexual violence by husbands increase the prevalence of anxiety and depression. India also has a similar problem. In fact, in India, there are other worse problems if you look into crime control and family. Other main causes are parents' alleged betrothing of children for renting two families in the early days. Between two families, this family like, like Hamlet and Juliet and all others, you know, that was 300 years back. But even about 50 years back, they would arrange. And poverty is one of the most powerful drivers of child marriage. Because parents are poor, they cannot give protection to their children, to the young girls, and who are being <coughs> molested, uh, being harassed by the young men of the villages, that is why they have to give the girls the marriage. If the girls had parents were rich, she would study at least up to 16 years old. And community pressures and norms as part of the tradition. Protection, seeking and support for being guardian. The parents are saying, you are too beautiful, we are too poor. We go to uh, break the bricks every day. You cannot even walk to school. So better get married. Honor is a family issue. They want the girls to get married early, to grooms approved by the families, and sometimes the girls are killed if they do not choose their partner. 
Also, girls commit suicide if they like somebody and they are not given in marriage. This is the age when girls hang themselves of the insecticide. <coughs> Risk of teenage pregnancy are low birth weight, premature birth, anemia, postpartum depression. Care. If, you, if there is nobody to care, and you know where she is, where she gives birth, you will be amazed to see it. There is hay, hay on the floor. If she is supposed to be untidy, unclean. So I have seen her shop. So I said, well, where, where is, what, are the, what, are, what are you using? Where is your blanket? She said, no, 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 no. We are not going to spoil our blanket. So the worst possible rags were there. I have seen myself when I was in BBC. I went there with the pictures. And they were there on the floor over the head. And she delivered the baby, she was living there. No sunlight, nothing. And when for food she was given, Kalajina is uh, black. Kalajina is English, you know? Something like small black duck dots. Mustard. Uh, not, not mustard, Kalajina, black or something. Like Nijina, Nijina, it's Nijina. That, a paste, and chili paste, and rice. This little dry quickly. No milk, no eggs. So, the, but there are people who are really looking into zero tolerance to child marriage. Zero tolerance. The elders, this is a book really launched by Nelson Mandela, Mandela God bless him. And it started in Johannesburg 2007. And uh, all the past presidents, uh, uh, are there and also Bill Gates is also part of it. And from there emerged Girls Not Rights in Alliance and uh, in Bangladesh we are a member of Girls Not Alliance and we have our own work plan. White Women Alliance, the activist group that I belong to, Plan International is working for this. Care, intercentral research of women, definitely. And Save the Children Globally, World Vision, and many, many other NGOs. Now, we have seen some of the negative effects of child marriage. What are our ethical and moral obligations? How do we address poverty versus child marriage, security versus child marriage, tradition versus child marriage, gender disparity versus child marriage, other ethical issues? <coughs> I present you the case. There are interventions taken like multidisciplinary approach in India and this was taken in Jamai, Bihar and Mahmudpur, Rajasthan and together with Mamata. Mamata is a very well known NGO in, in India and they succeeded through specially trying to be very flexible. Uh, the success factor was an experienced committed partner NGO Context specific design. Design has to be changed according to the context. Flexible and responsive approach to implementation. So, through that, in these few places, Jammu, Bihar, and Savai Madhapur in Rajasthan, they, they could do some, bring about some changes. And then, Mahmud also had promoted additional undertakings for mutual partnerships. The challenges for this was lack of clear directives and institutional support. At that place, the district headquarters people, the civil surgeon, they didn't like it. Because they were in control. And they, if, the, if the local people were, uh, were uh, uneducated, girls were uneducated, there was nobody to challenge them. But here you are empowering the girls. They don't like the challenge. Uh, so, lack of supplemental staff upon expansion of effort. So there were certain challenges. And education and child marriage, there is a big association that um, secondary, uh, secondary education actually helped, but it did not eliminate the child marriage, but it helped to somehow bring about a reduction in child marriage. But primary education did not. Getting only, only dealing up to class 5 did not. 
But if you go to class 8, then you are stuck, then you know your views. And specially designed nutrition and child marriage, uh, there was there's some effect because if women have the autonomy and the decision making power to buy food, then it would help them. Uh, so it is important to strengthen family support and interventions for pregnant child rights so that younger mothers are able to care of their own health. So though it did not stop child marriages, it actually made the child brides, the child mothers more uh, strong. Cash transfer to delay child marriage took place in Kenya and this was this did not uh, prevent child marriage but it prevented child pregnancy because the, the couple got the cash to delay pregnancy. So, some things work and some did not. Combination of different partners and a flexible approach gave better results. Primary education alone will not affect child marriage. Secondary education and attitude options might result in quicker reductions. Cash transfers reduce child pregnancies. Support of family and community is needed. Awareness of adverse effects of child marriage essential is everyone's headache, not government's alone. So, this is the Apunao's representation. And this is the work done that Derek asked, so I won't go into this. This is for this, Derek is for you. This is from this portion, this is for you. Okay. But here is my. Okay. So, I asked my the audience, if you were in a country like this, what would you do? I am an activist. I belong to the girls on Friday, I belong to white women and I am trying to bring about change. They love, the men love. How do you bring change? I am not going to wait 200 years. I am not going to follow the uh, uh, model which was done in, the, in Ireland 200 years ago. But if so many of my operators are going to die, I want to do something now. What change can I bring? You can go for education, you can go for all these things. Yes, it's good thing. It will take another 50 years before we see a real change in Bangladesh. What would you do if you were the, the president, the minister? for women's affairs in Bangladesh. Um, sit down, sit down. Um, I can I can speak as a uh, yeah. uh, in, my, in my position as a, as an educator, as a researcher, because it's a uh, realistic. So uh, what I can do, having known that as a researcher, um, I can recommend, but it must be research based. So that my recommendation would be something that is objective. So, uh, you need a uh, policy, uh, policy or uh, yeah, legal, legal, uh, legal measures. Because um, um, in your country, in Bangladesh, because my little things, um, it's uh, it should be 18 and above for for uh, for a uh, uh, lady in order to marry. And uh, must have the, uh, of course, the uh, approval of the parents. But in your country, you said it's under under eighteen years. It's sixteen. It's eighteen, but it's eighteen years. Eighteen years is the legal age of marriage. But most parents, sixty-six percent of the girls are getting married below age. Yeah, that's the problem. Even when they're thirty, even when they're twelve. Okay, so how do they? Excuse me, just. Uh when you are talking, I ask you a question, so maybe clarify the, the, the next uh, talk of Angelica. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the religious belief in your religion, in Sharia? What is the age for the marriage that uh, religious people believe in? Do you have any? The, it's the, uh, oh, we, are, we are Muslims. Even the Hindus also they, they get the girls married, but they, in the Hindu society, girls are more independent. Uh, in Bangladesh, not in India. 
and they get some education and they get to so because of the caste system they just cannot buy easily. They have to get somebody to match their their caste. And that's what it takes. What time. I mean in Bangladesh from the maturity age, do you have an age that it comes in the books? According to according to our legal system is eighteen years old. It's eighteen. According, yes. no, according to the religious people. Religious people is the same as all over the world. Do you have an age nine, nine, nine years old no, or no. ten years or You see, years. what happened is uh, Bibi Asha got married at nine years old, but the marriage was consummated when she was sixteen years old. Sixteen? Yeah. The marriage was consummated at when she was sixteen years old. And that is a different thing. We are talking about icons and special people. We are now we're talking about. Okay, my solution, case is, uh, my solution is something very different. Yes, you want to do this. Yeah. By the way, um, I'm embarrassed to say that in the United States, child marriage still occurs. Actually, the statistics, I was just checking them, uh, we had six children that were married under the age of 13, because it's still legal in some states of the United States marriage. Not in the state In certain states. So, moving to the next one. The good news I want to share with you, you asked what can we do. There are several models already working. One of the ones I'm familiar with that I'm involved is the Girl Icons. It's a group working in uh, India. And it started about 10 years ago. And what we do is we sponsor girls that are in communities, in villages, or in larger communities, uh, train them, provide education, and stipend to work on a project of their own. Just like the action plans that we have, they develop a project. We started with 10 girl icons about six years ago, and today we have 200. And it is working. It is, it is uh, preventing uh, childhood marriage. It is accessing girls to schooling, which is the next thing that we do. Uh, it is uh, work on education and menstruation, because menstruation is a big barrier for, children, for girls in India. They are not allowed to go to school any longer. And so, education, connecting with other countries and models that are already working and it works. And the funding is actually very small. You need very, you don't need a tremendous amount of funding to expand a project of education of girls. Okay. And that's, that's my suggestion to your question. Thank you. Actually, by Bangladesh, education is free and girls get a scholarship to, to study. Mm -hmm. Girls are getting school, it's free and they get a scholarship. So they we make that happen. They get money. They get some supplies. But still their parents get them married off. I would suggest something drastic. If if and there now it's this there are committees in the villages, elected representatives in the villages, union union position members, opposite position members, district commissioners. Okay. There in every committee there are three women who are supposed to look after the women's welfare. Mm -hmm. And they should know the rules. And whenever it happens there is an underage marriage going on, then if the person is responsible, he will try to stop it. I would really go for penalty. I would say that if the law is there, and if in that village, that opposite position chairman, he is responsible to see that all the legalities are maintained. So either not get the money and spend it on, on, on building a six-story house in the village, but if any girl gets married under 18, he is punishable. And similar in the urban sector, we have work commissioners and have women work commissioners. What they do as soon as they become work commissioners, they get vehicles and they start to give a foreign job, foreign tips. For every area of the municipality that they are responsible for, no girl should get married under 18, no girl should get married before stopping her, before completing, at least shower her as a safe generation. Otherwise, you get penalized. Okay, we have a little girl behind to ask a question. First, um, reaction. The reaction from you know, I feel pain for these women. Um, because at a young age, they experience these negative experiences. Um, 
Second is a question. Is there a case wherein some women at their right age were able to speak out, go to school, and defend her case? That's a very good question. Some cases are there because that's why I'm taking this course of adolescent children and life skills. You must say no. How to say no? And our girls, so their parents, they have to be confident enough to know that the girls are as valuable as their boys. And there have been certain cases. And, but most of the cases are not because their parents are, uh, are innovative. And, but because the parents are, are not poor, they are rich. So poverty is the basic driver, but we cannot give money to everybody. We have to change the mindset. And the only way to do, see that the legality is, is maintained, and we punish the, punish the people who are responsible to see that the government laws are implemented. Uh, I, I, I asked that question because if, uh, if, if an empowered woman became successful because she was able to finish college, she was able to bring up her children well, yes. she can be a good voice and she can yes, be, she, yes, she can be yes. the one to live yes. uh, and, and yes. be an inspiration that right. certain things, right. there are certain ways to get out right. of being yes. powerless, yes. to being exactly. powerful exactly. by having an education. Right. You're so right, that's why you have the advocacy program. Well, these women will be our advocates, and uh, we are using them, but still you need a multi pronged approach, including the legality approach. Because if you, if you don't respect the government's law, you go to jail, or you get three lashes for that. Once you give them lashes, they will find them. Then you will You give, give the mother of chairman two lashes, and you will see to it that all the girls are getting the right right but it's just birth certificates and getting married in time. Okay, I think uh, uh, Nabi and then oh, okay, okay, okay. questions. I'd like to hear Nabi first and then some young ladies. I have a question. What is the position of Islam Muslim clarities on this uh, on this issue? The position of Islam is the implement uh, the interpretation of the Quran is not correct. So when they go to the mosque, all the people are very religious, they do the fasting, they say the five prayers, and they go to Juma, the five prayers, everything is done. But then women, the respect for women doesn't come even from the monarchs. They don't say respect to women. If you, if you read Surah, uh, Surah Nas, Surah Nisa, if you read uh, the, uh, Surah Maria, yeah. yeah. So Maria, where the mother had a son without her father. And there's a whole chapter of the Holy Quran in that. Why don't your mother must talk about that? Yes, sir. what I'm interested uh, how they are thinking about this. Because yeah, we you know there are You see, our 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 religious what is their position okay, exactly? Our religious people are uneducated. Most of them. Those who are top level you know, uh, Islamic is foundational, they are educated. They know the real meaning of the Quran. But others who, stay, who are modernists, who, uh, live, who give the, the, the knowledge and to, the, to the father and to the men, especially during private prayers, they don't give them the correct portion. And so the, the interpretation of Islam is wrong in our country. Let me change my question here. Can you get the support of imams of mosques? We are doing that. Image. We are going to do that. And that is being done. That is being done. And that is going on for a long time in your life here, for a long, long time. But it has helped some some way that they have not come up as a, as a uh, as an opposition to family planning or to this sort of program. Because they have been played. But it's not that they are going to uh, advocate for uh, oh, for a uh, 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 marriage of girls who are in Do you think there will be resistance from other people? No, no resistance, but uh, uh, no help also. <laughs> no, no resistance, no support. Thank you. I'd like to have some... Yes, yeah, uh, I want to say something about the Islam. 
Uh, because uh, I believe that, and I read the Quran also, and uh, there is, is there no any torture against anybody, including girls, women. Therefore, uh, this is the Quran doesn't support uh, a child marriage. Is it, is it a child marriage a kind of torture? Is we have to ask our, ourselves, Quran support the torture or support the life, support the law, which is? You are asking me? No, it's a general. <laughs> Important and it is a deep pain in the community, in our, in my community yes. also. Yes. And I want to say before we had to uh, compulsory education for the children. It is very important because yes. compulsory yes. education yes. All about the uh, children marriage, child marriage, yes. and yes. protect the child. The child. It is very important. Yes. Now it is the change. It is the, a big problem for yes. my country because I don't want to live a traumatic society. This is a, a, a trigger, a traumatic society. Yes, absolutely. I want to live a, a help happy, a satisfied a, a community, society. Yes, thank you. I have many other slides in my own computer, which shows child mothers can be One question. Yes. Do, do, you, do they know how to read and write? Because I'm thinking, uh, do they know how to read and write? I'm thinking, I'm so inspired today of writing to one of the girls and inspire her that there is a way going out of that helplessness. I, I got up for you. And, uh, because some of them may go to class 3. And grade 3 means they don't have to read and write. But, but after that, they still, as soon as they enter puberty, they stop going to school and they forget easily. And the quality of education is not the same everywhere. In the villages, you have one teacher who is a farmer, and he'll come here and he'll have five classes in the same year, no blackboard, no roof, no walls. I'll show you pictures of that. But I tell you, this is, these are the real conditions. The government will give you the best picture and the best statistics, and we are, we are, we had exclusive breastfeeding, very 25 percent. The next is the statistics come, 66 percent is exclusive breastfeeding. What is this? They are just praising the Prime Minister. Exclusive breastfeeding is 66 percent. Is yes, but we also give a little bit of honey and a little bit of water, a little bit of coconut water. So what is exclusive breastfeeding? This is not exclusive breastfeeding. So this is it. So we have to be strong. And the only thing to be strong, if you don't obey the law, you get, you get three lashes. Yes. Okay, uh, we, yes. we have to please stand up to us. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Is there any laws for those girls who met at the young age to help them, like if they're stand up and ask for their rights? Is there a law to help girls and support them financially or? Who is supported? Government laws. <laughs> Don't they have any rights? <laughs> Our government is a beggar. The government is getting money as, as, as spending on wild pigs. That's what I said. When, when somebody asked me to about the government, we have received trillions of dollars from our independence. But it's Why are we in this case now? Why? We should be much better than any like, like when we were liberated, Thailand, we went to Thailand. Look at what Thailand has got. Look at Sri Lanka, with 30 years of civil war. Then minister, I went to the minister's house. He had a red carpet, old red carpet in his drawing room, and some chairs with red velvet. And when he came in, he had a white room and a white shirt. And he had a, a, a watch with a band. And we had these people 
new MPs who came with us, all had Rolex watches. So tell me, what is the difference? They love their country, they love their people. Yeah. They don't love their They don't try to make money out of their, of, of their minister. Uh -huh. yeah. Old British tales. Uh, we, uh, we look into the other rooms. That's why Robert has come and taken away everything. Look into our English room and see. Latest furniture, latest things, better look at. So we need uh, young people who are not corrupt to be a good government. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you, Mata. Uh, ladies behind? Young ladies? Anyone else? Would you want to get married when you're young? Would you like to get married? Get married what age? Below 18. It's a problem. Yeah? 50 lashes. Please stand up. Pass the mic. Anybody else? I'm telling you, there's no limit to control. Yeah. Please give us. And one minute plan, ask me. Okay. That uh, our girls are being harassed. Uh, can you suggest something? Say who is in the okay. village and you're the young people speak. Yeah, please. one more. One, one, one. I said, please, the girls martial arts. If you give me one, I'll give you two. Okay, now speak. <laughs> now, yes. Uh, I'm not exactly, uh, to, I'll be very honest, I'm not exactly knowledgeable of the legalities and uh, culture of marriage in Bangladesh, but I want to ask, are there cases where women in those times were able to escape from their marriages since first they have they don't have the autonomy to choose their to choose their um, to choose basically to choose and they don't have rights that time. So were there cases where there were women who were able to leave or to be saved from those um, from child marriage at yeah. that age? Yeah. So yeah it's their cases. And because we have uh, all these uh, special programs, why are the NGOs who see to it that the the chairman and the committees do their job? They we train the youngsters, the high school boys, the girls, the girl guys, and the boys, boys scouts to report immediately about this. And so they report to the media. We use the media, the newspapers. And the newspaper immediately tells cause of the, the Upuzela chairman or the district person, okay. authority. So always use the media if you want to change. Last comment, please. Okay, last question. Yes. Uh, I just want to comment on um, earlier, you asking about, when you said about your situation to be plastic, I was trying to formulate the same thing, if it's, um, if it's going to be a uh, law, uh, if it's going to be restricted uh, law uh, to, um, which for restrict, uh, the kids or the parents to uh, exploit uh, their young children to get married, then that could be one. And then also, uh, since it's an ethical disaster, since I just see that on your research, we're talking about um, the rights and we're talking about the child marriage and all that, but I think what is ethical is, is that um, if a child decided to get married at the age of 13 and 16, I think uh, that's ethical. For me, this is just an opinion. But if she's obliged or forced to get married at an uh, age below 18, or whatever the legal age in a certain country, then that could, could be unethical to do. So that's then uh, it will have it should have a um, a reprimand on the decision for the parents and the child. Okay. In somehow. Um, to your question, you know, later prime minister. She. A girl who is 13 cannot make up her mind. It's a lifetime decision. Divorce is very difficult in Bangladesh. A, a divorcee cannot stay alone. She's thought to be a prostitute. If, even if there was a survey in, uh, by UNFP, a longitudinal survey of women from the top level, educated to the lowest level, 45% of women said they were abused by their partners, by their husbands. 45% of all levels said our husband hit us, our husband cursed us. They are earning money, they are not living, but the lowest are, they are always willing to fight anything. So this is it. And what you said, no, a girl who is a teenager, she cannot make up this, this decision. It's a lifelong decision. You make a child, and then what happens to the child? Mm -hmm. 
If you're 18, if you're at least 18, you can have the mental, the maturity. Yeah, the children, you at least think that you can See, you have some education. If you have nothing, and you get the kids like living in the jungle, how will you survive? How will you go to the doctor? How will you pay for the medicine? How will you pay for the education of the child? At least for up to five years old. Demonization. A lot of responsibilities. With 13 years old, you love somebody, don't get married. You go on loving till you come to 18 years old. Don't stop loving. Wait. Okay, thanks, thank guys. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.